Greetings from Tokyo. My name is Daisuke Beppu, and happy Halloween, everybody. Continuing with my discussion of the films of Dario Argento, I would like now to talk with you, if I may, about a very special film, a contender for Dario Argento's best, Tenebrae. release blu-ray region b and so this has two discs so it has a blu-ray and it has the dvd so this is 101 minutes and it has a, the english soundtrack and also has the italian soundtrack and it also has uh, audio commentary uh, with Kim Newman and Alan Jones, a brilliant commentary, by the way. It also has another brilliant commentary uh, with Thomas Rostock, which I learned so much from. It's fantastic. Um, and then there's an introduction by Daria Nicolodi, uh, and there's an interview with Dario Argento, and there is another great supplement called Screaming Queen. Daria Nicolodi remembers Tenebrae. And then there is an interview with the Argento expert Maitland McDonough, author of Broken Mirrors, Broken Minds, The Dark Dreams of Dario Argento. I love that book, by the way. I, I don't have it anymore. I think I lost it, but I, I own two copies of that when I was a kid, and I just read that over and over again. A uh, real important book in my, in my Dario Argento education. Um, and then, I'm sorry, then there is another um, uh, supplement called A Composition for Carnage, composer Claudio Simonetti on Tenebrae. And then there's a goblin performance, a uh, live performance of Tenebrae and Phenomena. And then there is a trailer and then the booklet. So here is the front and here is the back. And we have the inside here, lovely. And then there's a the Blu-ray and here's the DVD. And if we remove the DVD, you can see the back, which uh, should reveal what the reversible sleeve should look like. And then we have the book here, which has uh, here at the front uh, one of the victims uh, after her throat has been violently slashed and her head is jammed to the, to the glass. There. So this is one of the book. This is the book here, and here is the back, which is really nice. There is the Japanese title of the film, by the way, Shadow. And we have a really nice book as, uh, you know, Arrow does a really nice presentation here. Um, and the essays here are just uh, fantastic. Okay, my friends. So as always, uh, I will be spoiling or potentially spoiling this film because I will be talking about this film in detail. So if you don't want to be spoiled, please turn off this video right now, especially with this film, especially at this one. You do not want to be spoiled again. Don't get spoiled by, um, by hearing uh, plot spoilers before you watch this film because you really want to avoid that with this film. I mean it. I really mean it because it is so filled with uh, surprises, uh, both great and dark, uh, that really should be saved for your initial viewing of this film because it is a truly fantastic fantastic film that should be uh, viewed fresh and without any information or as with little information as possible so after you watch it please come back and i would love i would love to talk about this film with you because i love this film so much um, but yes there's no rush so please take your time i will still be here and uh, we can go from there okay so you're still here tenebrae 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 um this is a a key film uh, in the Dario Argento catalog. It is one of the greatest Dario Argento, well, it is probably a contender for the greatest Dario Argento film. Uh, it is a th rich, th uh, thematically complex, uh, highly nuanced uh, film. It has a real uh, a s cobweb-like narrative structure that is really intricate 
and its narrative thrust is, uh, I think, almost on par with its technical bravura and achievement, which is just a purely uh, pure Argento. You know, Argento is just operating on um, all thrusters here, just so to speak. He is really um, just. It, it is remarkable, you know, the, the run that he's having so far. Even with a film like Inferno, you know, I, I feel like Inferno has its weaknesses, but it is still undoubtedly, undeniably, a, a very good film, and it is an artistic uh, achievement in many respects. So, inclu even including that film, you know, he's having a real solid run, and now with Tenebrae, Argento is just hitting us, um, uh, he's just giving us more reason to believe that he truly is one of the great film directors um, of this uh, of this generation. First and foremost, it is a giallo film, so it's like a murder mystery film, and it's nice because there are a lot of characters that can be suspects, and there's a lot of uh, gore and mayhem and violence. Um, and there's a lot of murder that's going on here, so there's a real uh, uh, kind of wicked uh, murder mystery element here, you know, so who is the killer? Um, and then we have, I think, characters that, for the most part, I, knew, I think are very likable and very relatable, um, and all of them really are quite, quite good. So this is, of course, led by, um, uh, you know, there's uh, Peter Neal, uh, the American writer Peter Neal, who I think is quite a, a, a remarkable character. He is very uh, charismatic and charming, and he's, he's quite likable, I think, um, in, a, in a very good way. Um, so um, already we have a, a means by which we, can, we, the viewer, can identify with and associate ourselves with the world of Tenebrae, uh, because the characters, I think, are very likable. Um, but what we have is a story that is so complex it's almost like and again i'm going to be spoiling this okay so i'm going to be talking about who the killer is so okay okay you've been warned okay so this plot is one of the most complicated plots um and it's really quite a clever plot it it's it really is um uh something that is uh it's something like out of an Agatha Christie novel, you know, in terms of how uh, Argento uh, diverts our attention away from one suspect, namely Peter Neal, in favor of uh, uh, in favor of you know the the murderer, right? So uh, Cristiano Berti, uh, but in fact, uh, you know, so what I mean by this, well, you know, we see. Uh, shots of Peter Neal at the beginning where he's riding on the airplane uh, from New York on the way to Rome and as he is riding on the airplane we get the first uh, victim uh, Elsa Manny uh, who is followed home after she has tried to shoplift the book and then she's got that really violent demise of her being um, uh, with the razor blade to her throat and then pages stuffed in her mouth. It's really quite a gruesome death. But we understand immediately that Peter Neal could not have committed this murder, physically speaking, because he was he had an alibi, right? He was on the plane. So, so therefore, uh, we then get into the plot of Peter Neal seemingly being the target of a really deranged or crazed fan who is uh, seemingly um, uh, taking the latest novel, Tenebrae, by Peter Neal, and really uh, just uh, uh, using it as the basis for uh, a killing spree. Uh, so in that sense already, we have two ways in which we can identify with Peter Neal. One, we identify with him because he seems to be the center of the focus of this, this killer. And two, we, we know from the offset that he didn't kill this first girl. So we think that he is the hero, right? Which is a, a phenomenally, um, uh, it's a phenomenal trick it's really wonderful the way he does that. Argento does this. You know, he tricks us from the outset, so we understand that he uh, can't be the killer. Uh, but of course, of course, Argento switches this on us, doesn't he? At around halfway through the film, um, you know, he gives us the real uh, thrust of the of the uh, the film's narrative, namely that it is Peter Neal who is uh, out there trying to kill um, 
uh, you know, the wife and the agent, and then later he's trying to kill everyone, you know, the police detectives, and, and then later Anne, you know, Dario Nicolotti character, he's trying to kill everyone, um, and he kills Gianni, you know, uh, garrots him and stuff, so, so he is on his own little murder spree, and he's trying to use this, uh, um, use the uh, uh, Cristiano Berti's uh, crimes and just pin it all on him. Uh, so it's really quite a clever, clever thing that's going on here. There are two murderers that are acting kind of independently of each other, uh, and yet they are connected uh, by this uh, this concept of the story Tenebrae or Peter Neal as the as the central figure here. And that is one of the great, uh, one one of the ultimate twists I think in any giallo. You know, someone that. that there are two separate killers that were acting independently, and yet the the main thrust, the the bigger picture, as it were, is that um, Peter Neal was the killer in the second half of the film, which is a, a just one of the great twists um, in uh, in in any uh, giallo film or any murder mystery, for that matter. I think, it, as I said, it, it rivals uh, the best of Agatha Christie, in my opinion. It, it's truly a, 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 a genius absolute genius on the part of Argento just true genius um, and you know, just let me just say here that if you recall you know that there's that moment uh, just before we get the switch right because when I see the switch I mean the switch from the Cristiano Berti killings portion to the Peter Neal killings portion and and in the middle of course we have the scene where uh, Peter Neal and um, Gianni uh, the young man uh, are are casing the the house, the Cristiano Berti's house, you know, outside, and that's where we get the famous shot of Gianni looking at, uh, looking from outside and into the inside and seeing uh, the axe that goes into Cristiano Berti's head, and he you know he sees this image that he later realizes meant something more than he realized at first. Another wonderful Argento thing that occurs in previous films, um, but. So this is the, the moment where the first part switches into the second part. And if you recall, just before we go into the scene, there is a really wonderful pan uh, of the camera in the hotel room after Anne and Anne leaves and everyone has left the room and it just pans from, from right to left. And it goes and it stops on this little, I don't know what it is, it's like a sculpture or something, and it just stops, and it stops at the point where light glistens, and then there is a, a real ominous uh, tone to the music. I love this moment. It's such a simple moment, but it's the pan of the camera that signifies the narrative break and change. And this reminded me so much of a very famous pan uh, that was used in the film Vertigo. Uh, the film uh, directed by Alfred Hitchcock, very famous film. It is uh, my favorite film ever, uh, Vertigo. And uh, I don't want to go into too much uh, detail of that film, but arguably there is a certain similar narrative structure that's being employed uh, in that film. You know, this film that film can be, I think, uh, divided into uh, parts. And in between those parts, we get a very wonderful pan of the landscape of, of daytime uh, San Francisco in the daytime and it's a really wonderful pan it goes in that film it goes from left to right and it just keeps going and going and going and it's a wonderful thing but when I saw this pan in Tenebrae going from right to left in this in this empty hotel room and then stopping on this glowing metal thing I thought this is just like Hitchcock again here we go again Dario Argento linking back to the cinematic past a la Hitchcock and I don't know if it was on purpose or not but it certainly is a visual motif that is so clearly Hitchcock in my eyes and I love it and and the timing of it couldn't be more perfect uh, Tenebrae and Vertigo I think there is a there is a a, a film studies essay there somewhere um, Oh gosh! Oh, and gosh, the the murder set pieces are just uh, thrilling, absolutely thrilling. You know, and a lot of it is is kind of artfully done, if you know what I mean. Um, for example, the the um, uh, um, the the journalist uh, Tilda, uh, who is killed rather early. Um, you know, of course, you have her. 
uh, looking out the window and then there that initiates that very famous camera move around the building if you recall as the tenebrae theme song is playing on the record player and uh, it's a really uh, it's one of the most famous shots in all of Argento um, and then of course we get her as she's changing out of her clothes and putting on a shirt and as she her shirt is over her head she's attacked and then the razor cuts through the, the cloth and then we see blood. Um, it, there's a moment and then suddenly blood spurts out. So it's a little bit of a, an odd thing. We'd, I'm not quite sure what the, the, the geography is of, of that moment. It seems to be suddenly like the shirt has become full size, like a big piece of cloth or something. And her face is, is shown through the, t the tear of the, the shirt. And then after like a, a moment of about two or three seconds, it seems like then the blood starts to pour out. So it's a little bit of a, an artfully done murder scene. Uh, which is an example of how these murder scenes are carried out. Uh, very no-nonsense, you know, except, of course, except the iconic, iconic um, uh, death scene of uh, Jane, uh, right? The, the death scene, and, and then you have the axe that goes through the, the window as it's raining and just chops off her arm. <laughs> he doesn't stop there. He has the victim... Just bathe the, the wall, the white wall, in just this huge swath of red and just more axe cuttings and, and blood lighting. And it's just um, unbelievable. It's unbelievable. This is, this is one of the bloodiest deaths um, in any film, in, uh, let alone in an Argento film. So, uh, you know, for the most part, Tenebrae is very, uh, I would say, very modest and uh, uh, quite artful in terms of its its uh, murders. But this murderer, man, man, he's just going for just, uh, uh, he's just going for it, is he not? Just with the blood, it's like painting the wall red. What can we say about the, the themes that are employed here in this Argento work? You know, there are many themes that are being employed. Um, uh, callbacks to earlier films like the the notion of the dangers of art um, and uh, you know of course it be, art becomes a very dangerous thing you know, here we have a sculpture that is actually quite dangerous and it actually kills someone uh, so that's very similar to moments that we've seen in from way back even with the bird with the crystal plumage and the, the big painting that falls on the guy and, and uh, also deep red of course we have what looks like a painting but in fact it actually is it is a reflection of, of someone that is a very dangerous person um, and then we have later on we'll have something like the Stendhal syndrome where we have art actually enveloping uh, someone or someone actually going into a painting. So there is a certain element of danger there. So art as a very uh, maybe active force or maybe even a negative force in the context of these characters is, is a theme that appears here in Tenebrae uh, quite, uh, quite literally. Um, uh, there's also a great scene involving Bulmer, uh, the John Saxon character, and his demise You know, in this public square, and it's bright, and there are many people around, and yet he is dispatched with uh, rather quickly and rather uh, ruthlessly uh, with uh, a stab to the, the stomach. And so this recalls other scenes in other Argento films where we have public squares and open spaces uh, still being places of great danger and and death. So we saw this, for example, in Suspiria, if you recall. We also saw it in the film Cat o' Nine Tales. Uh, well, this film, uh, Tenebrae, uh, does it in a very uh, memorable way um, and in a way that is, is it's truly, truly gruesome. Um, so... Uh, yes, this is another Argento theme that is being employed here. Um, you know, there can be more that can be said about the similarities with other films, perhaps. But I think what makes this film stand apart from the others is, uh, as a, something that I alluded to, its thematic complexity. There are lots of uh, dealings with doubles. And this is, I think, due uh, in part to the fractured nature of the psychology of the main character, Peter Neal. You know, he's fractured in two, perhaps, uh, which is due to this uh, very traumatic event that apparently happened to him in Rhode Island. Um, uh, involving uh, Eva Robbins, you know, with an apostrophe S. We also have dualities here in terms of the 
two murderers, you know, Christiana Berti on the one hand and Peter Neal on the other. Um, and then we have the duality which Christiana Berti seems to be acting uh, uh, upon, which is the nature of uh, fiction versus reality, which is a very uh, um, standard and um, a very important uh, kind of dichotomy that is dealt with in in these horror films and, and Argento films and films about artists, you know, the art versus reality. Uh, well, here we have Peter Neal and his book uh, presenting one kind of world, uh, but P but Peter Neal uh, lives in a reality that is that he tries to um, explain as being different from the world of the book Tenebrae. Um, but uh, then we have these dueling tensions, right? Uh, Christiana Berti is trying to bring the world of Tenebrae to that world, um, but uh, Peter Neal, at least in his uh, in his descriptions of the book, always denies that. But in fact, ultimately, what happens is that the world of Tenebrae, the book, is in fact the world that Peter Neal and these people inhabit. So, so they are one and the same. So. It's amazing. So we have this, this, these, this tension between these dueling poles, which ends up being a unifying force in a very uh, interesting way. Um, and uh, there are other examples of this. Uh, visually speaking, I think one of the most famous examples is when um, the inspector, uh, at the end of the film, right, he's looking around and he sees that Peter Neal has disappeared and he, he realizes that the, um, the razor blade that was used was in fact just a toy or is this a prop to fake his own death? Uh, and the inspector, of course, finds something on the floor and kneels down, and then all of a sudden, Peter Neal appeals behind him. So it's almost as though we have one person being replaced by another person. Uh, so this idea of duality uh, uh, between one person and another uh, acts as a very negative or destructive force to the point where one side totally destroys the other uh, both visually and actually. So he destroys, Peter Neal destroys the inspector visually, of course, by, by uh, when he is removed from the flame, Peter Neal then takes his place. Uh, but then moments later, he actually does destroy the person by actually killing him with an axe. So it, it's, a, it's a wonderful uh, interplay here between uh, one pole and another. Um, so this is a truly richly thematic film uh, that I think is filled with great nuance and wonderful complexity that is arguably unlike any other Dario Argento film uh, we have seen or will see. Uh, that's not to say that uh, the rest of his films are uh, thematically simple, uh, but I think here in Tenebrae there is something really magical and special going on. Uh, it's almost as though the narrative is just as bonkers as the style that occupies it. And I mean that in a very positive and good way. Uh, and that makes Tenebrae, I think, one of the great Argento films. Um, I should say here very quickly, uh, the music um, is one of the f my favorite musical scores. I love how the, the, the theme, um, it almost speaks you know, it, it, it has, it, it's almost as though it's saying para, para, uh, which I think is the Italian for fear, uh, the notion of fear. Uh, so there's this kind of driving force. So the music is almost speaking to us, which I think is just a lovely thing. It's almost, it's its, its own entity. Um, uh, and uh, I love that about the music. Uh, and also, I just want to say that the ending, the ending is one of those great endings. Um, you know, Argento likes to do this a lot. Uh, he did it with his opening credits. Remember, with Deep Red and Suspiria. You know, he he interrupted those credits with oddly placed narr um, narration or an oddly placed uh, flashback structure uh, that interrupted the flow or seemed to be uh, 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 inconsistent with or. Um, in contravention to the normal flow of the opening credits of those films. Well, here in Tenebrae, there's something that's going on with the end credits, too, because right after that huge sculpture thing impales Peter Neal against the, the wall and he's just bleeding there dead, uh, we have Anne, the Darren Nicolodi character, just looking on through the doorway as the rain and thunder are just... Um, just uh, uh, going nuts behind her and she's just screaming and screaming and screaming and this is this is the most effective thing then the screen goes black and then the credits roll and even as the credits roll she still hear her scream and scream and scream and just it just goes on until it fades slowly out and then the music slowly takes over 
So we have Argento playing with normal conventions of even the closing credits, which is astounding to me. And this is a uh, uh, this is an indication that he is thinking about every single detail. He is looking for any way to to poke at us and to make us unnerved, even if it's just a little thing like the closing credits. Um, man, this is a the mark of a, a great cinematic genius uh, par excellence, is it not? He is truly um, just off firing on all cylinders here and it's a remarkable thing it's it's a real pleasure to see tenebrae i'm very glad i was able to to get this um, and watch it a lot because it is truly uh argento's masterpiece um, it's going to be hard i can tell you right now that after i finish this series and i do my my ranking of all the argento films i'm telling you right now it's going to be it's pretty hard right now um uh my <laughs> my my top top spot uh, I don't know which film is going to occupy that top spot right now and uh, I would say Tenebrae is certainly a strong uh, contender uh, for that top spot because it is a a real masterpiece uh, one of the great giallo films one of the great Italian giallo horror films certainly one of the great uh, films uh, greatest films in Argento's catalog uh, bar none Tenebrae one of the best Okay, so let me stop there. Uh, this has been Tenebrae, and I hope you uh, found some of those comments to be uh, interesting. If you have any questions or comments, as always, please feel free to leave them down below. I'm very happy to address them to the best of my ability. Um, and uh, until then, my friends, I hope... Uh, well, and uh, next time I will be talking about a very... Hmm, uh, <laughs> a very uh, unforgettable film viewing experience and that is of course the film Phenomena so until then my friends uh, please be happy and healthy and well and please watch lots of great great cinema um, if you have any uh, recommendations or if you if you've seen any films recently that you think are just so good you want to let me know please I'm so happy to hear about it please let me know in the comments below and uh, I will take your con uh, recommendation to heart because I'm always looking for something uh, new to watch that is good so uh, I've been getting a lot of great recommendations from you guys by the way it's just been so wonderful I'm learning something new every single day and I have you to thank for it so uh, my friends uh, please be well and until we meet again Take care and cheers.